What's one of the most rewarding victories you've ever achieved? Did you get there on your first efforts or did it take multiple failures at first? Today, the Trinity crew learn a thing or three about this very question. After a few days hiking rural villages, investigating wrecked ships and recharging an empty secluded base, it's time for the crew to depart from Bathy Ithaca and continue their epic voyage. Their goal? To push onwards to Agia Ephemia, a small coastal town on the eastern tip of Catalonia. Their passage void by the grey, the gloomy and the grim. Surely that's not a bad sign, right? Welcome to Sailing Trinity Season 2, a Greek Sun Odyssey, around the islands in 80 days. Ready to dive into today's adventure, friends? If you'd like to see more of our Odyssey, hit the like and subscribe button now. Your engagement does wonders for the channel. Stay tuned today as the crew, driven by determination and led by mystery, unearth ancient stories and invite you to join alongside them for an entertaining and educational mythic odyssey. Without further ado, let's dive right in and escape the ordinary together. Just getting ready to weigh anchor now. I'm just popped on some sunscreen because the sun is out. It is a little bit breezy, but it looks like it'll be a nice day. A few scattered clouds. Nothing, nothing bad. Then we'll be off to Agios Effeminate, <laughs> whatever it's called. <laughs> Agia Athema. There we go. We'll get to doing that. I'll get back to you when we figure out what that will be. Exactly. Well, I have everything ship shape. <laughs> Before we do, I just want to do a bit of an, an engine check. And I did notice we have an awful lot of oil in the bills, but I'm going to check the oil levels uh, and clean it up. And you can see the oil down there, on the left hand side, quite a bit. So it looks like the oil is pretty low, so I'll top that up. Yep, so the oil was pretty low, but I've, I've topped it up now and I dipped the stick again and it's looking perfect. So I'll run another couple of checks just while I'm here. What I also noticed is that when I was cleaning out the bilge, it's actually mostly coolant and there's just oil floating on the top of it. So the coolant chamber is over full. So I presume it's just it's just spilling out every now and again. So I'm not too worried about that one. So as you can see, this is where we are now in Vathi, very well protected. So we're going to leave today, come around the bottom of Ithaca to the Strait of Catalonia in Ithaca and back into Asia Ephemia. As morning breaks over the peaceful village of Vathi, the crew of Trinity stirs, ready to embark on the next leg of their 80-day island journey. Now, with the brief engine check completed, they can head off safely. As they bid farewell to Vathi, the overcast skies set a presently moody tone, perhaps a glimpse of the challenges that lie ahead. Let's check in. I think we can start the engine. About to head up and do the anchor. And then we're. I take down the anchor ball. Yeah. Do we want the walkie talkies? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we just wait for Marcus. Okay. Let us begin. Ready, set, go. Go for it. That was pretty good. There was a lot of sediment and a few little rockies on the anchor. We didn't bring her up completely. We just left her right at the bow, if you will, and we just moved kind of slowly forward and let the sediment fall away. It took a moment because it was quite heavy, but then it kind of just all fell at once in a big clump. And yeah, now she's up and ready, and we are off. On our way. We shouldn't leave I'll the, get the helm. You, you get the me. helm. Um, so it's not too far, about a four hour passage. It's going to be under motor. There's basically no wind today, which can be nice, especially around here, very close to the islands. Enjoy the passage. Bye, Vathi. Bye. <laughs> There's salties right ahead of us. They look like a little, a little pin. <laughs> it's a wonderful bay. Now. 
couple thumbnail. Sun safe. Slip slap slop. Slip slap slop. Yeah. <laughs> I just love how the landscapes open up. It's actually a bit cooler now that we've got some breeze. Magnificent. Oh, Ghibli hair. <laughs> yeah, we're coming out of protection now. So the bit more wind. Islands everywhere. <laughs> Salty's ahead of us. Stay salty. Our buddy boat. They got the big purple cold D out. Really nice coastline here on the way to Agia Efima. We're going to be rounding the Cape now in a minute into the Strait of Kefalonia, heading towards a destination. Agia Ephemia, perched upon Kefalonia's eastern coast, like most coastal Greek villages, boasts a rich history and stunning natural landscape. Inhabited since ancient Roman and Byzantine times, the town was rebuilt after a devastating 1953 earthquake. Its effects presently recognized as modern infrastructure blends with traditional architecture. The wide rocks along the coastline are primarily composed of limestone, which is is a naturally light in color. Over time, the actions of waves and weathering polishes these rocks, enhancing their brightness and giving them their distinctive white appearance, an aesthetic marker of the island. As we know, the island itself, Kefalonia, is linked to the epic journey of Odysseus. According to myth, he and his men, while sailing near here, encountered the fearsome cyclops Polyphemus. Trapped in his cave, Odysseus devised a clever plan to blind the cyclops and escape. The rugged and captivating landscape of Agiophimia, with its dramatic cliffs, hidden coves, and pristine waters, evoke the same adventurous spirit of Odysseus's exploits, don't you think? Agiophimia marks the pages of mythology as gracefully as all those we've covered before it. However, due to some brewing bad weather, this won't be the Agiophimia we witness this time around. But let's not get ahead of ourselves just yet. First, let's check in with the crew. No wind for sailing down, but there's wind when we're coming into the anchorage. Are we anchoring or town keying? So we'll see what our body boats are doing as to whether we're town keying or anchoring. It looks protected enough, but again, it's going to depend. Oh, going to depend on the wind direction. So you will be in the cover of the marina, but you can anchor out just off the beach. I'll show you. So you can see all the masts just there. Okay, let's see how we go. The weather is a bit grim. It's not bad. It's just grey overcast spring day very beautiful can you hear me yep okay let's go see you in a sec We're happy and we're done, so up we go. We're having good luck. No, it's a nice breeze. Oh, is it? Yeah. yeah, look at that. Hey, buddy. Beautiful breeze. Look. Oh, woohoo! <laughs> oh, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Let's hold the head up with the tongue and lose the hook. Come out. Nice. Take the hook out. You might do it. Just let me take the rod for me. Yeah, I got you. Wow. Perfect size. Very nice. Smile. 
After arriving safely in Argeophimia, Martin's successful catch adds a final touch of triumph to their day's voyage, as the sun sets on another safe passage. a lot nicer here this morning. The sun is out. <laughs> Just having a nice little tea before I go downstairs to get some work done. I'm going to be staying here for one more evening before we head off. It is also Orthodox Easter this weekend in Greece so absolutely everything is closed. So we will not be probably heading back onto land here and doing all that much. So I'm going to enjoy my tea and then we'll give you some updates on what we're doing, where we're going and how we're doing it. Our buddy boat is leaving us today, but only for a month. Yeah, they're going back to yeah. Germany, and then we're meeting back up for the rest of the season. Be salty. Bye. Bye. Oh, I'm sad to see them go. Yeah. It's nice though. It's nice to have this. This is part of the lifestyle. You meet amazing people. You spend time with them. You leave. Maybe you see them again. Actually, this <laughs> a motorboat here, dog star, Kina and James. We interviewed them. We've been friends with them all during the winter in Preveza and they, they pulled up here yesterday just right after us. So that's just done, kind of. Bye bye. Auf Wiedersehen. Auf <laughs> Wiedersehen. There's the anchor. As a bittersweet farewell fills the crevices of the crew's morning, the weather forecasts threaten to fill their afternoon with something much more challenging. In preparation for the looming gloom, the crew decides to pick up and med more onto the town quay. Let's join them. Okay, so the wind forecast is up for around 20-25 knots. We're building up a little bit of a swell. Okay, so that cold front has moved in. It's a bit gusty, it's nothing too intense, but we do have the privilege of the town key being right in front of us. And we are a bit close to the rocks, I'm just considering our recent escapades. We do think it'll be safe to just moor up to the key for the weekend. There are 40 knot gusts coming in this weekend too, so it should be pretty easy. But yeah, we'll see how we go, it should be okay, and uh, fingers crossed. I can't hear you, there's so much wind. It's not in line right now. Yes, perfect. Wait till it gets in line and then start bringing her up. Let's start now, the wind is dying down, let's go. I'm doing my best, the wind has us. Control it. Okay, let's see if it connected. No, no we've lost it. We've lost it. Take it up. Yeah. Their first attempt at anchoring proves difficult as strong winds take the bow and repeatedly complicate the chain laying process. Okay, I'm gonna go around the farther side, the far side. I'll go around the back of you. Yeah. Okay, Tay, I'm gonna spin it round and then drop, yeah? I don't know I don't know where the radio's gone. Full. What is it? What is it? What is it? 
undeterred, the crew tries again. But as the winds continue to control their every move, even leaving the helm locked, Med anchoring becomes a very formidable opponent for their day. We're slowly getting better and better at our distance judgment. That was difficult, but what a fantastic harbour master. His instructions were very helpful. After two lengthy anchoring attempts, the crew beat the tempest of the wind and make it to safe harbour. Unfortunately, the triumph is short-lived as the early evening brings little relief. Let's check the aftermath. We have no more tea. The hub master is like, all chain, good sleep tonight. So, Dad, do you actually want to come here and explain why we even did this real quick? So why did why did we do it? Yeah, well, we had a lot of gusts today, so 20, 27, 30 knots. Yeah, they're they were very, very strong. Basically, we adjusted the anchor. We found that the anchor was, wasn't in, uh, wasn't set. So no matter what we did, we get smashed up against the wall. And tomorrow the weather is uh, forecast for 40 knots. So plus, 40 plus. 40 plus, yeah. So uh, we had to take the boat back out and, and reset the anchor. And the harbour master came along and a couple of bystanders and helped us out. And it was it was great. Worked out well. Did he say he worked on cargo ships his whole life, 28 years? Yeah. And he's, now he's here. Yeah, so he knows Captain, exactly what to Captain do. Captain Marcus, is it? Anyway, we can sleep tonight. That's the main thing. It's the main reason and we don't want to smash the boat off the keyboard. Mediterranean mooring is a popular anchoring technique. It involves anchoring the boat by its stern to a key or dock while the bow anchor is deployed to keep the boat stable. However, difficulties arise when strong winds come into play. Wind can push the boat sideways, making it hard to position the vessel correctly and to drop the anchor in the right spot. If the anchor does not set properly, it can also slip, leading to potential hazards. A slipping anchor means the boat could drift, causing it to hit the key wall or other nearby vessels, risking significant damage. In fact, studies have shown that improper anchoring and mooring account for a significant percentage of boating accidents. With these studies in mind and three significant anchor holding issues ourselves over the last few weeks, we've decided to invest in our vessel and crew's safety with SailServer. This easy to install device has many versatile features, however, its offshore anchor watch was our biggest interest. With SailServer installed, 
and you can go carefree ashore while it keeps a watchful eye over your vessel. You will get a notification on your phone if there are significant changes in wind conditions, water levels, or vessel drift. This has allowed us to relax and enjoy our adventures on land when at anchor. Navigate smarter, not harder with Sail Server 2. Use code TRINITY10 and enjoy a discount on us. Link in the description below. Speaking of anchor chain, it would seem that Trinity's freshly laid one has begun lifting out of nowhere. Let's check in. Huh? Oh, no, Definitely. Oh. Oh, hey. Every day there is something. I think they're lifting our chains. It's so windy. Oh. Where, where are they He's going? taking them down there. Is he down there? We got poles, but um, I think we might be okay. Whoa! Um, they definitely pulled our chain a bit. Don't think it was complete. We're gonna let them get in. It's very stressful. Um, and then we're gonna call the harbour master over just to check our boat and see what we should do. With all their chain out and nowhere to go from there, the crew faces an uncertain night. With the winds intensifying over the weekend, will their boat hold and withstand the weather, or will they face a fourth tiring round of securing their vessel? Stay tuned to find out. Join the crew next episode as they begin their passage to Paleros for some very exciting off-grid updates, sure to make this season much more exciting. That is, if they make it to Paleros, perhaps the incoming weather the system will have more in store for their newbie sailing skills than they originally anticipated. Will our crew rise to the challenge on the next phase of their journey? Who knows? Guess we'll have to wait and see. Which part of today's story stuck with you the most? And what mythical legends do you think the wind will whisper in our ears next? Share your thoughts in the comments below. We can't wait to escape the ordinary with you. See you there, guys!